This episode of Weed and Grub is brought to you by Scent Air. Go to scentair.com and use the code GRUB for 25% off. Hello, and welcome to Weed and Grub. How's it going, Mike? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm so excited to be here with you. Um, I'm so excited to be here in our um, scent air uh, infused room because um, today in uh, celebration of our Halloween episode, I am a beaver. And uh, you know what my mom always told me is a beaver. It's nice to always smell really sweet. A sweet smelling beaver. Everyone loves a sweet smelling beaver. So here we are. We've got our, our scent air behind us. And Mike, why aren't you talking to me? Oh! oh! <laughs> I lost all my coins. <laughs> oh no, I lost my coins. Oh no, it was I a lost good them. Sonic moment. If oh, anyone wants no. to tune into our YouTube, you can see that I am a beaver and Mike is Sonic the Hedgehog. I'm and- Sonic and I've lost my coins. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> These costumes. Oh man, it's a good time. Mm, this episode is also brought to you by Funyuns because they are real good. I'm gonna see if I can eat a Funyun with my uh, beaver teeth. Let's see how this goes. Okay. Yeah, it totally works. <laughs> <laughs> What's up with your teeth, Beef? Oh, well, they are made of paper, so they're they're, they're flexible around the Funyuns. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Well, um, what up, Beaver? <laughs> How's it going, Sonic? Really good. Welcome to a very spectacular episode Ooh. of Weed and Grub, everybody. This is a podcast about comedy, cannabis, cooking, culture, calling shit out, and costumes. And costumes. And Wah-ha-ha. cosplay. Wah-ha-ha. I really have to finish chewing these Funyuns. Hang on a second. Sure thing. I can vamp. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Happy to have vamped. These are good costumes. I'm pretty excited about my beaver costume. Look, I'm very Canadian, if you can see on the on the video i'm wearing a shirt that says we if you find mary jane attractive go to our youtube because that was crazy (laughs) just showing off my uh rack (laughs) your damn (laughs) my beaver rack (laughs) um i was a beaver at a party recently and someone said something and i said um oh that made my nipples hard all six of them (laughs) hey oh beaver bits that's a good bit that's funny <laughs> i got beaver beaver jokes for days oh man how about you how you feeling in sonic was this a favorite of yours hey, this is great this is a lot of fun i'm having a good time yeah it's also very hot yes so as this pod goes as this episode goes on i may be disrobing and be turning back into mike and if you find mike attractive tune in to watch him take off his clothes on air <laughs> can you hear my teeth yeah yeah <laughs> i might have to take them out <laughs> Because, uh, yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. What are some of your favorite costumes of all time? Besides that, well, wait, let me back up. Okay. And say, I bought this on Amazon Mm -hmm. um, with one day shipping from some warehouse, probably next door to me. Right. You built your costume. I sure did. Here. Oh, I got to stand up so people can see my tail because I'm very proud of it. Okay, here we go. Okay. Um, I made my tail (laughs) out of brown vinyl. And attached it to a belt. Um, I'm wearing a fur hat. For those of you who are just listening, I'll describe my whole outfit for you. I'm wearing a fur hat that um, the studio dog Noodles just tried to eat. Um, <laughs> that was very funny. My, <laughs> my teeth are made of paper. And I'm wearing a very sweaty brown velour tracksuit that I also bought on Amazon with one day shipping that I feel is kind of like... Um, it reminds me of what the gangsters in Barry wear, you know what I mean? Like the, oh yeah, the, the, the like Adidas tracksuit of yeah, Northern Hollywood. Exactly. Absolutely. So I feel kind of like a gangster beaver. <laughs> oh, my. oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, full bush. Oh, nice. All day. Uh, this beaver does not wax. No? She's a, no, she's a full, full fur beaver. I gotta take these teeth out. Okay. I can't, I can't do that for too much longer. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. Thanks for playing along. <laughs> <laughs> um, but favorite costumes, I don't know. I mean, you've had so many good ones. We were just talking about some of your like, because you started as a little, a little I, guy. I'll dress up until I'm dead. Yeah. I'm not too cool for that. I love dressing up for Halloween. Yeah. I really do. It's so fun. Um, I am taking this off slowly, yes. but it is so fun. <laughs> well, I you sent me a couple pics. Well, I had, so yes, I wanted to um, 
share my very, I was very proud of this jellyfish costume that I made back in my Burning Man raver days. I made it with um, EL wire, electroluminescent wire, and I wired the inside of an umbrella and they made all these like dangly pieces that came down. And it was like the the first time I went to um, Electric Daisy. Mm hmm. And everyone was holding up those signs with like, you know how everyone gets to the front of the stage and they all have like the signs so you know where your friends are and they hold them up and they're like, they light up and stuff. I didn't know that, but I'm so glad that exists. Yeah. I was like, oh, that. If I'm on drugs and I can't find you, that's a bad feeling. This jellyfish costume was the fucking greatest because everyone could see me on the rave floor all night because it was this giant jellyfish held aloft and then people would take it from me and they would pass it around and the people would just like follow the jellyfish and get under it while they were tripping and... I was proud of it. Magical. It was, it was cool. And then I could just like look cute under it, you know, which is the best part of a like a costume like that where you can just like hand it to someone and then the costume still exists and you can just go to the bathroom. Yes. So you nice. know, because going to the bathroom is a key part of Halloween costume design for me. Oh, are you teeing me up for my recent story? <laughs> That Maybe. is mortifying. Oh, we can get to it later. Okay. Well, it is my scariest Halloween story. Oh, yes. We're going to tell scary Halloween stories later okay. on. That's right. So that's a little bit of a foreshadowing Ooh. to um, my scariest spooky tale of all time. Um, so that the jellyfish I loved. And then um, I think we have a picture of when we met Jim Belushi and I was dressed as a caterpillar in a sleeping bag. <laughs> I think that's the coolest thing about you. Of all things, the coolest thing about oh, you thanks. is that you can go to a thrift store and throw together the dopest Halloween costume for 15 bucks with an hour's notice and make it freaking happen and make it freaking happen that you turn heads <laughs> as you're walking around and Jim Belushi's like, I'd like a picture with you, Miss Caterpillar. Like <laughs> you can really knock it out of the park. Oh, thanks, Mike. I really appreciate that. I, I, um, I do love a DIY Halloween costume. Like I, I'm always so impressed with, you know, especially like it's great when they're clever. Like uh, we were just at a party recently where we saw someone who was dressed in a fringe jacket that was on backwards with a, a cowboy hat and like a pink wig and braids. And I was like, huh. And he said, I'm a reverse cowgirl. And I was like, OK, love yeah, the yeah. Cleverness. I love the cleverness. But love I, the also, cleverness. I also I also Mark love... gave a limp thumbs up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like it's a little. <laughs> oh, it went. Oh, he was a copycat. OK, I see. Oh. Well, it was still I like I just like the uh, the D the DIY nature. And I always always I'm almost always a creature of some kind. Like I like seeing like you're almost always something that's dead, like, a terrifying something. I want to be covered it when I when in like third grade when we had to go around the classroom. I was in Mrs. Cruel's classroom. No way. That's a real name. Cruel with a K. Wow. And as, was she nice? You know what? We never gave her a fair shake. Yeah. As third graders who are, who, when you look and you're like, whose class am I in? Who's in my class? Are my friends in my class? And you have Mrs. Cruel. It doesn't even matter if she's good or bad. It sounds like a roll doll character. Like you're just 100%. never going to give and her a chance. Also, she had a short, tight haircut like Ooh. mine. Mm. And she was, to me, ancient, which probably means in her 40s when you're in third <laughs> grade, you know? And so like everything about her was... um was like Nurse Ratchet, yeah. even though I, for all I know, she was a very sweet woman, but I couldn't tell you otherwise. You're just wired to hate her. Yeah. Wired to hate her. So uh, we were in Mrs. Cruel's class and we had to go around and everybody was like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And so everyone's like, astronaut, president, princess. And I said, movie special effects artist. And ever since then, I've just wanted to be covered in blood, covered in burns, do my own scars. Mm -hmm. um, I love it, love it, love it so fucking much. We went to that party a couple of years ago. Oh, I guess it must have been pre-pandemic where you paid a makeup artist to come to your house and do like you're like you've gotten beat beaten up real bad in a fight mike tyson's punch out i played mac oh facing mike tyson yeah and yeah gave me a big black eye and cuts on my nose and i wore a bright pink hoodie so oh this impressive. is my second year in a row being a video game character then hey oh hey nice oh i like that that's well, fun do we have pictures of you as oh here's here's little mike looking devilish Holding a, um, did you carve that yourself? I carved that pumpkin myself. <laughs> Great it's job. It's pretty spooky. As you can see, the nose is a triangle, which I think is menacing. Yep. Um, and then the next picture is, uh, oh, me as a kid modeling. How about that? I just, uh, I might have, you when you said send two pictures, I might have sent six. Um. <laughs> <laughs> you also, can I just say in this photograph, you should have had a modeling career as a child. You definitely could have been a model kid in the 80s for like, you know, what, look at you sitting on that, what is it, a haystack? Haystack with a couple pumpkins. Looking I'll tell you what, cute. did I tell you how, uh, careful Mary Jane, I'm a werewolf. Oh no. Uh, <laughs> I loved, man, I I was never allowed to see scary movies growing up, but all I, you know, when you're not allowed to do the things that you want to do. Mm -hmm. And so I would hide that, that, um, those pajamas, those werewolf pajamas glow in the dark. Oh my and God. I would just sit in my mom's closet for hours 
until she would come upstairs and then I would scare her and I would scare her so badly. Like the shrieks were real. And now like I've just transitioned those shrieks of terror into laughter. And um, as long as I'm getting you to yell out loud uncontrollably, I'm a happy guy, I guess. <laughs> you doing closet comedy I'm now? I'm doing closet comedy. <laughs> I will be in your closet. I will stand there forever. And when you open it, I'll just say... You'll make me laugh? Yeah, I'll say knock, knock. <laughs> and I'll stab you to death. <laughs> <laughs> closet comedian Mike Glazer slain in West Hollywood incident by terrified beaver. <laughs> yeah, last words were boo-hoo, why are you crying? Because he was crying as he passed away. Oh, no. <laughs> what else? Do oh, look at this little Mike. Is that your brother? No, that's Cookie Monster. Oh, okay. Who is it though? Is it a Cookie person? Cookie Monster. Okay. <laughs> and you're also a werewolf again. I'm a werewolf again. Again, I only brought this up. I'd like everyone out there listening to one, send us your Halloween pics. Let's put them on yes. our IG story, um, whether they're from a go or from today. Like, I want to see your Halloween costumes. We'll tag you. We'll put them up. Also, if you have any childhood costumes where your mom wouldn't put the makeup close to your eyes because she was afraid that she would blind you, I would also like to see those because look at the fucking, it looks like I'm wearing <laughs> sunglasses. <laughs> The a amount of negative concern space in there. From concerned parents who don't want to deal with, you know, pink eye. Like you actually have, you, did you rub your eye right now? Yeah, some, there's Funyuns in my left eye. Funyuns in your eye. Yeah. When my rings went everywhere, some of the ring went in my you eye. You got a Funyun in your eye. <laughs> <laughs> Hazard of the trade. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to. Uh, Blinded by a Funyun on a this, podcast. This is why we play the game. This is why we're one of the best podcasts in the country. That's if not right. the world. Bert Kreischer, we're coming for you. Play hurt. <laughs> play serious. And then, um. Oh, and these then are great. Oh, wait, where's the one that I wanted to show you? Oh, I don't know. Did it not send? Uh-oh. It didn't send. Damn, you just have to tell me about it. Full leather mask with a zipper mouth. Uh full leather cross, like a bandolier, like full leather cross with a steel ring uh, in the middle of my chest. Mm -hmm. Tiny, tiny booty leather boots. Mm -hmm. High Rick Owen style leather boots. Mm -hmm. So... Wait, leather boots, booty shorts, bandolier leather top, and a mask with a zipper. There are some people face. who are very into, into you who are sweating right now. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> it was a hot one. Yeah. Literally and figuratively. W were you the gimp? Um, it was actually, I was the um, I was the t-shirt guy for Late Late Show. Um, and I would they would say uh, during warm up, and who wants a t-shirt? And then as the gimp, I would run out and throw t-shirts into the crowd. And then I just kept it and wore it for Halloween. So you were in that outfit on late night television for <laughs> all of America to see? I don't know. Fantastic. If, it, if it made the cut onto TV, great. If not, I have the video somewhere for somebody to hack in and blackmail me eventually. Weren't you also left shark at some point? I've been left shark. I was a bear with Sean Hayes. Um, wow. I was a gimp. Yeah. I, <laughs> I was, I've got a, I contain multitudes, Mary Jane. I'm not just a crabby stoner. Man, when you write your <laughs> memoir, there's going to be some good fucking moments where you can call up Sean Hayes and be like, can you blurb the back of my book? I don't know if you remember me, but one time I was inside a bear costume. I bet he would do it. Yeah. Yeah. I absolutely. did make a mistake with Sean Hayes' assistant um, that I'll own up to here. Sean Hayes was pivoting to, I think he had sold a TV show after he was hosting Late Late Show. And I wrote to his assistant was like, hey, we all had such a great time together while you were hosting. Would love to, my job is ending here at the Late Late Show. Would love to be involved over there. And he was like, yeah, totally. Would you want to be an assistant? And mm -hmm. I was like, writer's assistant. I want to be in the writer's room. And he's like, oh, you know, I could connect you as an assistant and you could help me. And then maybe connect you with some of the other names that Sean's friends with and you could go the assistant route. And I was like, no, I only want to be in the writer's room, but thanks. <laughs> Ah, humbling. Humbling. Did I get an email back after that? No. No. No, 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 you did not. No. All I had to say was yes. Yep. Yo, for real talk, I know this is a spooky episode, but you know what the spookiest thing is? <laughs> your own mind. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, when your regret. Ego, when you, yeah, when your fucking ego gets in the way, and then you make the wrong move, and then you just fuck. Yeah, regret, and then that just festers, and then that turns into resentment, and resentment is the number one offender, mm -hmm. which I have learned. Uh, such an interesting saying. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and then you're just walking around. You're the scariest thing on earth. <laughs> For real, for real. Ooh, yeah, wow. don't overcomplicate things when somebody says they're willing to help you. Don't then say, time to play hardball. Yeah, God. <laughs> well, sounds, I mean, I do stupid like shit, man. that you shared that story because it is a lesson learned, a fucking hard lesson. Yeah. And l learned, it sounds like. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, 
<laughs> we'll see what happens we'll next what time. Happens. Yeah. Can I can I share one of the best costumes before we move on from our costume stuff? Uh, although you know, just go to the YouTube and look at us. We look amazing in our costumes here. Um, the one of the best costumes I ever saw was my ex boyfriend went to the New York City Halloween Parade, which is the biggest, coolest event. With you know, everyone comes out for it, and he went as an Elmo hunter. He built this whole costume with a big red fur coat and big red fur boots. And then he had Elmo heads as a big, huge necklace around his shoulders. And then he had a spear and he did his like face up to look like a terrifying hunter. And he had like one of those like safari hunter hats. And the children were not OK. <laughs> like it was so upsetting. And then he was upset because he's a good guy. And he was like, I thought it would be a really cool, funny costume. And like, yeah, kind of dark and fucked up. But I didn't expect to legitimately like legitimately make children scream and like run into their mom's yeah. legs and hide. It was great. That's an awesome costume. It was an awesome costume. Heck yes. Yeah, it was real good. Dang. Elmo Hunter's pretty dope. It was great. And then another time, my friend Jason went as Charlie Sheen. And this is pre-Tiger Blood. And he just was like, Charlie Sheen's just unhinged. I'm just going to go as an unhinged person. He had bags of flour that he was like, quote unquote, blowing rails from all night. And the best part was he had stacks of fake $100 bills. And he was just like stuffing them in people's bras all night. And my friend <laughs> Natasha, the next day, she woke up and she was like, Jason, I had a $100 bill stuck to my lower lower back. How did you <laughs> do that? <laughs> he was just like being the most disgusting lunatic. <laughs> and then there was a, a a costume where the three of us all went together. Jason, Scott, and I, we went as um, Siegfried and Roy and the tiger that bit, whichever one it was that got bit. Uh, I think it was Siegfried. Siegfried. And the tiger was Montecore. And mm. so I was the tiger. I wore a sexy little tiger suit and I like did my face up like a white tiger with blood coming down. And then Scott was the one who gotten bitten, so he had like all the blood, oh, and they, he was wearing like costume. this like Jacqueline Smith pirate shirt. And then Jason was the one who didn't get bit, so he was just wearing this like pirate shirt and pants. And when we weren't with him, he just everyone was like, "Are you like the puffy shirt guy from Seinfeld?" <laughs> <laughs> he was like, "No, I'm a part of this. Get over here!" And then when, he was like, "You guys have to hang out with me all night. I'm not getting any action. <laughs> everyone just thinks I look like a fucking." I don't even know. Not cool. That's very funny. So those are some of my favorite costumes. That's very models. funny. Thank you for playing along and listening to you. It's a perfect third wheel costume. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it totally didn't make sense unless both of us were there. Yeah. That's like a perfect third wheel Did costume. Did not think it through. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had pictures of those. I got to dig them up. I'll share them next week. Okay, cool. But you won't. But okay, cool. Yeah, well, I'm never going to follow up. <laughs> Is this a good place to talk about me being accused of not following up on things or not being on time because I'm a, because of weed? Sure. Because, well, yes, but that's also bullshit. Yeah, I You've know. gotten so much better at being on time. Thank we've, you. We've had real conversations about it where I'm like, hey, not cool. And you're like, okay. And then you're on time. Because <laughs> I get scolded. Yeah. Well, and also when we interviewed Roxane Gay, I can't remember if she said it on the podcast or if I just heard her say it somewhere else, but I look up to her so much. And she said five minutes early is on time. Yeah. And I was like, if Roxane Gay says that, I got to I got to pay attention. hundred percent. But I did have a, a moment because we were talking about this before coming on the pod about like, you know, stoner tropes and stereotypes. And one of the things is like not being on time. Almost everyone I know in cannabis is super on time and super productive. I had a, a time where uh, I was on a panel in New York City with a comic who shall remain nameless, who was organizing the panel. And she told me to show up at 1230. And so I showed up at 1215. And the panel started at 12. And as I walked in the door, she was like, oh, hello, it's Mary Jane from High Times, of course, late. And everyone like turned around and looked at me. And I was like, bitch, I have the email that says 1230. And she still she wouldn't let me like, live it down. And it was just, Ugh. anyway, that's such a, uh, we have beef now. You should have beef. She, mm -hmm. she, all she had to do was say, sorry. Yeah. Also, that's such a hack premise these days. Oh, you smoke weed. So you're late. Although yeah. sometimes it seems to work in your advantage and I fall right into your trap oh. because one of the topics I wanted to bring today is the grand opening right by my place of Potato Chips Deli, mm -hmm. a new sandwich shop in Los Angeles, California. I have been seeing the construction for over a year. I have seen the coming soon banners hanging over the rafters of the Potato Chips Deli. I got an email 
two days before the grand opening saying, welcome West Hollywood resident. We would love for you to join us at our grand opening. Doors open 11 a.m. Saturday. First 50 people in line get a free sandwich. Mm -hmm. I forward that email to you. You sure did. And say, hey, let's go to the grand opening. I want to be first in line for the new potato chips deli. I have seen this go from rags to riches. The doors are going to open. We must be first. And you said, great. I got there at 1030 a.m. Yo, I, you got there. At, you, I, you said I'm going to be there. Yeah, you were first. <laughs> There's a picture of you first. I'm fighting off old women and old men left and right <laughs> who got grumbly that I got there before them. You got there. I know you got because we'd said we were going to meet there at 1030 and you, I think, got there at 1020. And then you texted me that you had coffee for me. It was very impressive. I woke up at 830. <laughs> you think I'm playing around? Okay. I almost camped out. Yeah, truly. I almost camped out like it was first. a PlayStation 5 at Best Buy, but instead it was a roast beef with horseradish mayonnaise. Free sandwich. Free first. sandwich. First, mm -hmm. I get there. You show up at 1040 with Archie. That's right. Archie Moo and I strolled up, we strolled on up. We take another picture. Yep. Of you and I together, first and second. And RG, <laughs> or first together. Or first together. I, well, <laughs> this is where it gets tricky. You showed up late. I gave you a coffee. Mm -hmm. There's a line around the block behind us. At this point, yes, people are starting to show up. There's a murmur. There's an energy in the crowd. That's right. You people can feel know. it. A few sandwiches. 10.59 and 90 and 59 seconds. Mm -hmm. Ding. It hits 11 a.m. Right. They open the they door. They open the doors. It's on our YouTube. And there's Mary Jane going in first. There she is going in first, <laughs> ahead of me, straight to the front of the line. And, and saying, I ordered the first and sandwich. And ordered the first freaking sandwich at the new potato chips deli. I didn't even think of it at the time as doing something wrong. And I am on air apologizing. I am so sorry. I truly didn't think about it. Mark, I know. Oh, my God. I know. I'm so sorry, Mark's face, producer Mark. I feel terrible. And I truly didn't think about it until you mentioned it when we were talking about recording today. And I was like, oh my God. And I didn't even realize you wanted to be first. And you were like, I fucking lined up an hour before. <laughs> and I was like, Jesus, the entitlement. So this is my lesson learned for just feeling like I was, you know, <laughs> fully entitled to just stroll up after you, you hand me a coffee and I walk in first? What's wrong with me? And the first thing you said is, what's the deal here? Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I, I walked in and I was like, tell me how to order. And then I ordered, delicious. I got a burrata sandwich with, uh, um, yeah, it was like burrata and fresh tomatoes and arugula and it was super fucking yummy. The bread is really good. Yeah. And it was, but I'm so sorry, Mike. I'm so sorry. I truly didn't I realize it. it was a thing. I don't line up for stuff. I think that's truly in my fucking psyche and my DNA. I don't wait in line for anything ever. I understand that completely. I, I just don't. I, I can think relate it was to that so much. I think reinforced by my very good friend Paula, who for years we would walk up to lines that would be like around the block for a club and she'd just be like, she was fabulous. She was from Manchester and she had this amazing British accent and she'd just walk up to the bounce and she'd be like, you know, come on. Like, and she'd just like have a, great attitude about it and he would always let us in yeah I just never waited in line unbelievable so i'm so sorry what and would you rate the learned. sandwich oh okay sandwich um do you accept my apology though i do accept your apology i needed to hear that i accept it okay i am serious that i wanted to be first but i am also ribbing you about how much i care Okay. Because I think it's very fun to stand outside for a half hour and, then and truly <laughs> tell people, sorry, I'm first, who were like trying to meander. <laughs> there was one dude. Yeah. I'm going to say his name on air. Derek. Derek. Uh, who pre he was looking in the window of the door, mm -hmm. you know, the glass door. He's looking through the window of the door. Uh -huh. And I was like, I'm here first. And he goes, oh, oh, sorry. I didn't see you there. And I was like, yes, you did. You're just <laughs> pretending to like meander near the window so you can like slide in ahead of me. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. I'm fucking here dog that's a little old lady move too yeah it absolutely I feel like little is. old ladies who you know and i feel for the little old ladies because once you get past a certain age as an, as, a, as a woman in society i think there's like legitimately people kind of do stop seeing you and so like they use that to their advantage <laughs> their sneak attack and they all of a sneak. sudden they're like standing in front of you at line in line at the whole foods especially mean eastern european women for sure yeah they yeah. they like get in front of you at like macy's and they're like i just need a price check on nine items before you check out and you're like <laughs> what are you talking about? I just need to know how much this belt, this blouse, these pants, these socks, and this underwear is. And then when they do the price check, they're like, yeah, I'll get all of them. And then they're just like checking out ahead of you in this sneaky fashion. It's so fucking sneaky. I had a guy walk up wow. right in front of me. What I don't want to get on that, 
but Mark is right. Because uh, of your late arrival, first entrance, yeah. somebody who would have been 50 got bumped to 51 and didn't get that free sandwich. That's on them. They could have lined up at 1015. I was there I at 1040. Stand, I stand by Mary Jane on that one. Yeah. And people are allowed to hold you a place in line. 100%. I actually hired a line waiter at one point because there was a cool thing going on in Central Park. There was this like balloon ride and I wanted to give it to someone for their birthday, but I didn't want to wait in line. And so I hired someone to wait in line and then brought my friend up to that person and paid that person. And then they took the spot wait, in line. How much did you pay them? I think I paid them like a hundred bucks. I'll take that. You know, it was like an all day that like it was a very long wait. I believe it was 20 bucks an hour was what they asked. Okay, so, so I think I'll they waited five hours. I'll take, a, I'll take a 20. Yeah. Just to stand in line, read a book, listen to a pod, smoke a joint, chill. Yeah. Right. You want to Venmo me or like how, what's the. Yeah. It's cash only. Cash only? Cash and weed. Okay. Well, <laughs> I have weed. I'll take it. Yeah. I'll <laughs> yeah. take an apology and a I'm 20. very sorry. I'm just kidding. I really am. The sandwiches were really good. They Thank really you so good. much for waiting in line and getting me that great sandwich. I would rate that sandwich. Honestly, it's best sandwich I've had in recent memory in LA. There's one sandwich that I had at a spot where there was like a crispy fish sandwich that still is number one in my head and heart mm. at Highly Likely Cafe, if anyone is down in that part of town. But this uh, spot, the deli shop, deli sandwich what's it called potato sandwich deli P potato, potato chip, chip deli, deli. What yeah. a weird name yeah i don't know but shout them out i got the roast beef horseradish mayonnaise arugula um white cheddar great mm -hmm. sandwich um also i i don't know if it's an la thing i would love for people to chime in how much is a sandwich where you live oh can yes. we talk about that for a minute? So I liked this price point because this was a big fat Sammy and all of the sandwiches that I could see on the menu were around 14, which I thought was pretty reasonable, especially given how much everything fucking costs nowadays. I know. But is 14 reasonable for a sandwich? I mean, it's so much money. It's so much money. But With, I, think I think it has you, to be that much to cover their costs and be good. I think so, because I was um, talking to somebody not only about weed, but uh, I watched a, a YouTube video about dollar slice pizza inflation in new york oh yeah to a dollar fifty wild and while it doesn't seem like a big deal it's a big deal because of tradition it's a big deal because of like affordable slices for a walking in new york thing but they all said like once the pandemic hit and once um what's it called the chain of supplying supply chain supply chain <laughs> <laughs> Uh -huh. um, all of that racketed up. And so now everything is tw tw 400 times more expensive and that falls on us as the consumers. So like a yeah. $15 roast beef sandwich, no chips, no drink would have been unheard of, I think even like five, maybe eight years ago. Yeah. Something like that, you know? It's crazy. And now like, I mean, I feel like more often than not when you go to a place like um, Gigiata or um, any of the other like gourmet sandwich even shops. Even Slugways. They're going to be like 17, 18 bucks maybe even. Yeah, absolutely. It's a little crazy. Yeah, how so, much are you paying for a sandwich in your hometown? What's the most you would pay for a sandwich? Yes. What's the most you would pay for a sandwich? It depends on the sandwich. Um, Truly. Yeah. I think yeah. I think at $17, it better make me nut. If I'm going to craft and having a Tom Colicchio steak sandwich, I'm going to pay upwards of $25 for that, Sammy. I feel you. You know? Yeah. But I know it's not a sandwich, but a burrito is like a sandwich that just isn't invited to the country club. And <laughs> I think like, I think like I went to Chipotle and I got a burrito for 10 bucks and yeah. it was bad and it it's made my Chipotle. stomach hurt. It makes your butt hurt And too. I didn't feel good. And then mm -hmm. I took a nap, but it was only $10. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what you get for 10 bucks. <laughs> So, yeah, I Wild. don't know. But shout out to the crew. Congrats on your opening. Thank you so much for inviting us in. I'm so sorry I took the first spot. That You're just not seems even like... a West Hollywood resident. I know. God, I'm so sorry. It feels <laughs> like I just 100% cheated. Who is the Canadian runner? Ben Johnson, I think, who's the cheat who um, ran against Carl Lewis back in the day. This is uh -huh. in the 80s when I was a kid. And he was he broke the world record for the 100 meter, um, whatever it's called, 100 meter dash. Yeah. You know, when you run sure. 100 meters. <laughs> Anyway, he was the fastest man on the planet. And then it was found out that he was using steroids. He was oh. doping. And so it was, he was a cheat. And then the medal actually went to Carl Lewis, who came in second, who was the American runner, the great American runner. Wow. So I just tried to be Ben Johnson to your Carl Lewis in yeah. a way. It goes Lance Armstrong, Ben Johnson, <laughs> Mary Jane Gibson. <laughs> <laughs> just sliding in and taking something that wasn't theirs. <laughs> cheaters. Cheaters. <laughs> 
Hilarious. Cheating Canadian beaver. God well, damn it. Well, thank you for waking up early with me so that we could be the first at Potato Chips Deli. That was a lot of fun. I will always wake up early with you. Um, the next topic is yours. But before we do, I wanted to <clears> shout out <throat> Scent Air, who is sponsoring this episode for a couple of reasons. One is you should go to scentair.com and use code GRUB for 25% off. Two, because in my place right now is my Scent Air machine. And I just got back from Humboldt where I got a very generous amount of flour in plastic bags and it is all over my place. And yeah, I love the smell of weed, but do you know who doesn't love the smell of weed? Who? Me all the time. Oh, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't like, want to. Who, who's that crazy who's person? Who's that crazy person? But I don't like, I don't want it. I don't want my whole apartment to smell like that. So I've been using my scent air machine and I've been mixing it up between the pine and the saddlewood. And um, honestly, when I come back home from the comedy store at night and I'm like a little bit stoned, really hungry, and I just want to like watch YouTube and make a big thing of popcorn, it feels so nice to open my door and have that scent air machine like wafting that pine smell all over, especially mm. with the holidays coming up. And I don't want my place to smell like weed. I don't think my neighbors want my place to smell like weed. And so shout out to Scent Air for giving me something fun and pleasant to come home to. You can check them out at scentair.com. And um, one of these babies will um, diffuse fragrance for up to 300 hours. Oh, really? Which is like, what, a year? It's a long time. If you turn it on for an hour every day, yeah. it'll last you a year. That's right. Great math. Weed math. <laughs> Weed math. <laughs> <laughs> so go to centair.com and again, use the code GRUB. It's 25% off, which is so much. And yeah. Um, yeah, you can get all sorts of stuff. Great for holiday gifts. Great for all of the uh, cannabis lovers in your life. Great for home or office. Um, I love it. Toilet. T fantastic. They cover up, It covers up Archie's farts real nice. Yo, what is up with a dog fart? He is a stinky little guy. It's crazy. Yeah, he's a stinky little grunter. Yeah. I mean, I don't mind it because I love him and I literally kiss him on the lips. So, you know, I'm used to his smell. But yeah, he's his breath smells like fish. His feet smell like Fritos and his smart farts smell like sleepy nerds. I don't know. <laughs> when we send this to send air, maybe we lift that. I don't know. Do we lift <laughs> that? Like, no, we don't want that. We don't want it. We don't like it. <laughs> anyway, send air is presenting the Grublet Gazette this week. Our news story is just about the news. Yeah. There's so much news happening, and I know that everyone is really feeling it, and so many hearts are hurting, and there's so much to keep up on. And I try and do a lot of reading, and more often than not, I run into paywalls. And so this news is really just if you want to read news and you run into a paywall, I just think paywalls shouldn't exist, especially in a time of global crisis. I think all major news organizations should take their paywalls down, or at the very least, make the news that's like in that region, if you're affected by it, should be available. Wait, I'm going to interrupt you for a second yeah. before we get into it, because didn't you get from Apple News the other day an alert that golden retrievers might be mysterious or something that like that? That was crazy. Like, that's not paywalled. <laughs> but that is paywalled. Oh, that's, that's... <laughs> Apple News is like a subscription service that I have to sign up for to read about why. Yeah, I think I screenshotted it actually it was so crazy we were on one of our walk and talks smoking a joint and yapping and uh yeah it was truly apple news spotlight golden retrievers are mysterious or something something like that wild so if, screw a paywall whether it's about golden retrievers or i don't know maybe israel and palestine or something like yeah. that you know exactly yeah. right uh so yeah i just i really do wish that all news organizations would drop the paywalls there are so many that are behind very expensive paywalls like the washington post um i have a subscription to the new york times which costs me 15 bucks a month it's so much money so i try and share free articles from there when i can but anyway if you want to break a paywall that's the news. There are a couple of ways to break a paywall. The main one being a website called 12 Foot Paywall, which is just um, 12ft.io. Throw it in the show description. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The, but the, um, what is it called? The address, the URL is 12foot.io, but it's just 12ft.io. And it's, um, they say, you show me a paywall and we'll give you a 12 foot ladder. And you just, you know, clip your, copy and paste your URL, drop it in there. And if they can break it, they do. More often than not, it works. I use it all the time. And it's just a great resource for reading stuff. Sometimes it doesn't work. So there are other ways you can get um, past it. I just saw an Instagram video in which you can go and you select the whole thing. And then you use some sort of like code um, cracking thing where you like do an inspect element and I don't know. Man, you were never going to go undercover as a hacker. <sighs> if you were even, working with the FBI. I don't even shut my it. computer down properly, dude. I'm How many tabs it, you got open? How many tabs? Yeah. What's your what's your usual like average amount of tabs open at one time? Uh, upwards of 20. Really? Mm -hmm. That's wild. When I'm working on a story and I open a tab oh, sure. for a source to yeah. that story, I leave it open. 
What's your unread email situation and text situation? What's Upwards of 10,000. Oh, you are that type. Mm-hmm. We are so opposite. We are a beaver yeah. and Sonic till we die. <laughs> Sonic, fast, efficient, collects the coins, moves on, level uh-huh. completed. Completed. Beaver is just like collecting shit, collecting shit, collecting <laughs> shit, and building. Building, building, collecting and building, collecting and building. But listen, you know, it works. Yeah, it does. It works for us. It really does. Yeah. Um, My paywall thing, I'd, I'd never really thought that deeply about it, but if knowledge is power, it truly is like a type of gatekeeping um, that I, I do have a problem with. If I yeah. think about it as like, oh, you can't afford to learn what's going on in the world. Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's really unfortunate, especially because when it comes to a lot of these major news organizations, those are the ones that are behind paywalls and the shit that proliferates for free on, you know, all of the fucking cesspools of the interwebs um, that it just goes out because, you know, you don't have to pay for it. So. Oh, that's interesting. The free you know, articles are the propaganda more times than not. Or at I least mean, the Yeah, I'm sure there's a study where you can like actually look at the data of, you know, what's free and what's meaningful and what you have to pay for and what, you know, is legit and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, it is infuriating when you have to sign in to play some pay money to read about shit that you should definitely know about Absolutely. without paying for it. And disclaimer, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so don't <laughs> drop in the comments and go, actually, paywalls are needed because the industry is in shambles and there's no way to make money. True. Yeah. Duh. Just make also, the important stuff free. Make the important stuff free. global crisis times. Yeah. Please keep the golden you. retrievers behind the paywall. Yeah. We don't care about them at all. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening in the world? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's really, that's a really good, well, especially because the second part of our news story is Halloween specific. Oh, yeah. And such nonsense. Not news. Not news. This is uh, the people, Girl Look that presents not news. Not news is people are not going to try and give your children edibles on Halloween. That's just not news. That's not a thing. <laughs> People who love weed and who have edibles in their house and they have kids, they keep them safely stored away because mm-hmm. you're a responsible parent. Or you're someone like me who sneaks into the liquor cabinet and f- takes a little bit of sherry because it seemed like nobody's been drinking that ever and pours it in a water bottle and goes trick-or-treating and then sneaks dry sherry with his friends at 13 years old and none were the wiser till today. Okay. But that's if me making that action. If your parents had action. edibles, you would have also stolen them. As I would what have taken saying? those edibles. Yeah, okay. but I'm not giving edibles away to children. Nobody's I'm just giving stealing edibles. them as a kid myself. <laughs> and kids aren't stealing it. I think actually the statistics around use by um, minors of weed as weed gets legalized goes down. The, all the data, pr- of course, shows it's like yeah, it's not cool. Yeah, they're all going into their parents' medicine cabinets for the Xanax and the f- oxy. Yeah, and so yeah. you don't need to worry about your kids trying to uh, go trick or treating and getting handed edibles by some creepy stranger. They are n- people don't give out drugs for free, and certainly not to children. Please don't worry about it. Mm-mm. Obviously, be safe with your edibles if you have them at your home, and you do have kids. Like I did have one friend once bring over some weed candy to a friend's house and they had kids and they were like, you, you just need to tell us that there's weed in stuff. Yeah, of course. But they weren't, nobody's giving cannabis edibles to children. No. Not a thing. Fentanyl laced. No, Charleston my- shoes. <laughs> I can see a couple fentanyl laced Charleston shoes no, making their way around it. there. That's a fucking drug panic around Isn't you know, it crazy? giving kids drugs it really crazy. consistently every year. Yeah. People freak out about it. And every year it's like, it's not a thing. It's just like the satanic panic is just a mass hysteria. Same thing around this. I'm handing out ketamine Twix. Great. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, that was the FBI. <laughs> 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 yeah, like I pulled up um, as many articles because I hadn't thought about that in so long, but it is Halloween. I was like, I wonder if they're still proliferating that kind of like fear based bullshit news. And every single year, at least two or three articles say along the lines of like, um, weed may be yeah. given to kids as a, a, a from a reputable source. And the word may is doing a lot of heavy lifting. Yeah. Perhaps. You know what I mean? Are the stories true? Have drugs and needles been found in children's Halloween candy? Or a lot of this is from Canada for some reason. There is one here that says two charged after edibles given to kids on Halloween. This is all anecdotal, though. This is not this is the thing. Like everything happens once or twice. Right. Like there's going to be an example of something happening at some point. All around the world, there's everything happens at some point. Yeah, it's but like the LeBron not, effect. Right. Meaning that like there is a LeBron and that exists, yes. but nobody else is LeBron. Yes, exactly right. I like that, the LeBron effect. So like, yes, okay, so these people gave edibles to kids on Halloween. Terrible. It's not like a widespread thing that we need to panic about. Exactly. It's not widespread panic. It's not the band Widespread <laughs> Panic. <Thank you. laughs> the musical geniuses, Widespread Panic. Shout out to 
our friend Jordan, who I know is a pan, a spreadhead. Spreadhead. She's a spreadhead. Yeah. Um, have you ever eaten an apple and there was a razor in it? Never. Have you? Nope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> have but, you ever had a pineapple that had a knife in it? Nope. Have you? Nope. <laughs> you know what I have had? What? Uh, I bit into corn one time and there was a worm in there. Oh, gross. Mm -hmm. Gross. Yeah. It was gross. a grub, actually. I can't with that. Yeah. I know our name is Weed and Grub, but mm -hmm. honestly, maggots, crawly, anything inside something else, I can't deal You're with. You're anti-grub? Oh, my God. It. I... I I had to put my phone down the other day and I never put my phone down because <laughs> uh, there was a TikTok of a turtle getting maggots removed from its head because oh, no. it got a bot fly got it got into it and they were pulling like mama maggots out of this fucking turtle's head. And I just I can't stop thinking about it. I'm saying it so it gets out of me. Ooh. I remember when I was a little kid, you know how you like smash acorns and eat them because they taste bitter and it's kind of fun. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> no, I'm just saying yes to keep playing along. But <laughs> okay. no, I don't. But go on, please. Uh, bit of a scientist. Uh -huh. And uh, and so we would smash acorns and eat them. And um, and one time I smashed it and opened it and there uh -huh. was a maggot or a grub in there. Wow. And, it, and it scared me so so bad I screamed and threw it down and ran home and uh, I think that's when my maggot fear started yo so. I think your maggot shit is connected to a past life I think that you were like a civil war soldier who got like some festering wound and you died with like maggots wriggling around in a in a maybe open so wound or something because you were so it feels past and I don't I'm not truly like well, I don't really I have believe dreams in past about lives, it but I do have dreams also, about it yeah. And maybe it was in my legs because I have dreams about pulling maggots out of my legs. Yo. And um, and that is a recurring dream, which tells me that it has a little bit more of a deeper meaning than just my subconscious floating around grabbing bits and pieces of whatever. You know? Every once in a while, I'll hear about something where I'm like, that actually really does feel like it's connected to a different lifetime. Mm -hmm. And um, yours, your maggot stuff feels that way for me. Well, this you is you died in a previous life with maggots coming out of your womb. <laughs> I can't with you. I can't with that. You That's know what so I gross. don't like? What? As, as far as worms go, earworms. <laughs> I'm mad about them. <laughs> I have one right now. I've had it for uh, closing in on 48 oh, hours. Jesus, at this point. you're talking about like a song or some shit. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, man. I was like picturing a slug sliding out of your ear. Oh, yeah. Those are terrible, onto too. Onto the ground. Yeah. If like anyone it, saw Wrath of Khan, that's probably like... Yes. Yeah. I can't. That? I can't. Yeah. I can't. I can't. I Going can't. in... Yeah. Well, this this is basically as bad as that. It's a fucking TikTok trending sound that I've had in my head for 48 hours. I can't get it out. It's mm -hmm. terrible. It's from the boys. It's like that, Ashley, look at me. And then there's this like, doom, 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 doom music. I can't describe it. It's it's in there. Yeah, it's playing as I'm talking with you right really? now. Really? Mm -hmm. Isn't that so crazy? Like I hate it. It's so it's fun to picture your brain sometimes, and this it's, is one of those fun times when it's like I'm picturing my brain, and in the background it's like la 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 la. la, la, la. Like, isn't that wild? <laughs> I feel like so. I need to like smoke a big fucking joint and like stop the record from skipping because it really does feel like it's just on that. Hear it? Hear it? Yeah. Hear it? Hear it? Yeah. I wonder if you're. Well, I don't want to go. That's too tangential. But um, do you know how to get rid of an earworm? Are you going to tell me to like hold my breath or something? No, I've heard that the the real way to do it is to listen to the earworm on repeat until it like removes itself. Like no. your brain will just get bored by it or That's something. It's not going to work for me. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, Mark gave a thumbs up on okay. that. Okay. So I'm well, just, just saying. to listen to that 1,000 times <laughs> on TikTok. You know what my earworm is? What? The Bible. Okay. <laughs> this beaver is getting sleepy or exhausted <laughs> the bible always ah, quoting great always leviticus say one thing from the bible uh eve eve eat at the apple yeah inside a worm inside the worm there was an apple Ins inside the apple there was a worm and then there was a universe inside there wildly psychedelic you mm -hmm. know the bible is very psychedelic actually yeah the burning bush is like from acid or something right or Can from cannabosum or that's the they think that that is related to cannabis yeah. the burning bush is called cannabosum yeah i think i don't know i don't know i forgot all, all my bible stuff i was educated by nuns it was like a horror movie was it no. they hit you and shit no they were actually really great but i like to say um that it was terrible. It was great. Sister Mary Teresa Doyle and Sister Mary Margaret at Holy Heart of Mary High School for Girls. And um, yeah, it was pretty great. Cool. They're good, good people and good educators. And it was a good education. So I thank them. Yeah. Nice. 
Huh. Yeah, no, no horrors there. No, <laughs> not funny. Do you want to tell some horror stories? Oh yes, well, Segway King. Sure. Okay. Um, I would love to tell a scary story or two. Well, we were also going to talk about stoner survival tips. Oh, uh, I connected ahead. to our connected to our uh, how to be safe on Halloween and not worry about your kids getting uh, edibles when they're going out and trick or treating. But what you need to know as an adult, if you're going to go out into the world in a costume and like what to do to stay safe. We have a few tips and tricks. Yeah. My first one is spot the narc. Man, I wish I had met you seven years ago. Okay. Because I did not know how to spot the narc and I got narked up on. I really did. Man, when he pulled that police badge on his necklace out from under his shirt to the top of his shirt and I looked at that badge and go... That's a badge. <laughs> Damn. Oh, fuck, man. Damn Spot it. the narc is so important. It really is. I was at Burning Man uh, many years ago with my friend Natasha, and we were rolling, like feeling super good. And I'm sure it was very obvious that we were very high. And uh, this guy walked up and it was like he literally had gone to Spirit Halloween Spirit Adventure and bought like Burning Man costume. Like he was wearing like <laughs> all of the aspects. He had like a camel back and he had like we could just he just looked like, you know what I mean? Yeah, I do. Yeah, and, I uh, do. and he, he pulled like if up. You, if it was like a cardboard doll with yeah. cut out clothes. It would be and that. He was, there was no dust on him, which is crazy. Fascinating. Good. He was good clean tip. and he rolled up next to us and he just pulled some <laughs> version. I can't remember exactly what he said, but it was some like, how do you do fellow kids kind of move where he was trying to ask us like, what drugs were we on and where could he get some? And it was just so obvious. And Natasha was amazing. She just stepped back two steps and just pointed her arm at him and screamed narc. Wow. And he disappeared so fast. And then we actually watched him and a bunch of other people around. They all kind of disappeared. And they went back to this like weird van that was like parked a hundred feet away. And they were like, go, you know, driving around the playa and like creeping on people. But he was a zillion percent an arc. And oh. Natasha sussed it out and called him out so loud. And I was so impressed. I was That's like, awesome. Amazing. Also, what a doof going to Burning Man to arrest people. <laughs> oh, God. What a loser. They're everywhere. It's so crazy. You're such a loser. No, I'm sorry. We're dancing in the desert and like, you know, feeling like we're in touch and with the universe. And then cleaning up our trash. Yeah. <laughs> Radical <laughs> self reliance. Ooh, terrible. Ooh. Oh, God. Bunch of jerks. <laughs> Get him in jail right away. <laughs> It's crazy. Insane. Spot the narc's a good one. Spot the narc. Um, I also like to, I learned a great lesson when I was working at High Times and I was driving around with weed in the car at events and stuff. Driving, you don't drive the speed limit when you have stuff in the car and you don't want to get pulled over. You drive two miles over the speed limit. Oh, okay. Yeah, because if you drive under the speed limit, that's suspicious. And any more than two miles over the speed limit, they can pull you over. And right at the speed limit is like mm, right. two miles over the speed limit, hands 10 and two. I know. always go seven over. Right. Because I feel like 10 is egregious and 10 means like... They can pull you over. You, like, like, yeah, 45 <laughs> and a 35 is a big difference. Or 70 and a 60, big difference. But I always feel like seven over is kind of the sweet spot because it's not um safe but it's probably the flow of traffic for sure everyone's always going a little faster a little fast mm-hmm. but i guess if you're on your own and maybe you're like driving through like the suburban roads you know yeah, going you home like or like there's a pound in the trunk and shit like that yeah two mm-hmm. over is the move that's Good what know, i learned because i well you're from people still who here. i trusted who were like you know moving moving weight around or whatever like yeah fucking, you know i don't know yeah what they were up to but they just taught me to that that's how to drive and i was like okay cool that's a really good tip and i'm still here <laughs> exactly that's yeah. why and for seven maybe i wouldn't be i don't know yeah yeah good good tip and mine is oh please you no, got no, more? go ahead no you're on a roll mike i want you to talk now yeah but mine is like what is your what is it if you're wearing if you're wearing a onesie costume put <laughs> snacks down your pants so that you always have snacks at the ready critical <laughs> That's why I wanted you to keep going. <laughs> no, this is so important. Okay, thanks. <laughs> you, if you have snacks in your pants, listen, you're getting laid. You know, I I, I had a bunch of Funyun bags down my pants at the party. Shout out Leonard for the invite, Leonard Smith. Um, and uh, I kept just reaching into my pants and pulling out chips all night long. <laughs> I had some of your Funyuns, <laughs> your pant Funyuns. Yeah. Thank you. It was great because I had a little mushroom sparkle happening. And I, you know, once I had sort of gone past the point where my sparkle was fading, I was very hungry and I had no food. And then you handed me a bag of Funyuns from your pants. Mm-hmm. This is stoner survival skills, Mike. That's true. If, you, if, you, if you're wearing pants, put some snacks down them. Snacks in your pants. Yeah. Fantastic. That's mine. What was yours? Something oh, my, practical. My last... <laughs> 
Harry Bale money or something boring. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was just going to say, if you're in costume and you're in a room full of other people who are also in costume and you have eaten an edible or whatever it is you're feeling like the effects of something that is a little m too much for you to handle, go outside and look at a tree. Just immediately. Just go outside, find a tree and look at it. Because my the worst time that I've ever had on any substance of any kind at any time was when I was on mushrooms. I was in costume. I was in a room full of other people in costume and it got really claustrophobic and I started to panic and I had the worst experience. And I actually ended up saying some really terrible stuff to one of my friends really? because I started feeling like violent and trapped and weirdly aggressive. And oh my God, it was awful. And I really, that was a big learning experience for me to just be like, <laughs> I should have just walked outside. I should have full, fully taken myself on a walk. So it's such a good tip. Can That's I show you a picture? Because I, um, I've been getting a lot of anxiety smoking weed recently in groups, mm. and I had to remove myself. And yeah. I did that tip. Yeah. Check this picture out. Oh my god! Is that in humble? Yeah. Beautiful. I was just too stoned, and I just excused myself, and I went and I went to a tree, uh -huh. and I talked to the tree, and I gave it a hug, and I just breathed, mm. and I calmed down, and then I took a picture of me giving the the. Uh, tree a thumbs up and saying thanks so great tip that's so nice great tip survival skills these aren't even stoner survival skills they're just survival skills in life i feel like right now i think you know? so too yeah. yeah if you're feeling anxious in a group of people and you just go find a tree <laughs> yeah i mean it's a version of touch grass right but uh, i don't like that saying i'm trying to think if there's any other survival skills um oh i i have one okay if you're going out on Halloween or Halloween weekend and you're turning up and you know you're going to take mushrooms or you're going to take acid or you're going to get drunk or you're going to get high or all six, then maybe order or make a big fat lasagna or a meal mm. and have it in your fridge already ready already for when you get home or when you wake up the next day feeling a little shell shocked. You've got yourself, you've got future self set up. By past self. That is a great tip. A lasagna too. Yeah. Brilliant. Like a nice vegetarian lasagna. Exactly. Mm, a bunch Be of spinach in there. A bunch of spinach. You can air fryer it too. What's your cheese game on that lasagna? Oh man, we got ricotta, a little bit of like low moisture mozz, mm -hmm. some burrata. And then I need to add salt to all of that yeah. so that it brings out the flavor because it's such neutral, creamy cheeses. Top, top, maybe some parm, parm reggiano. Yeah. A little funk in there. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is great. Good survivals. I'm going to make lasagna tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're running up against it this yeah. one. Um, well, so do you want to get to the cream some, corner? Yeah. Oh, cream corner. Yes, I have a surprise for you. I um, made um, something for you to celebrate Halloween. And if you look on the screen behind you, you'll see... Um, it's I, corn. I wanted to celebrate candy corn. because Creamed corner. Creamed corner. Who doesn't love creamed corn and corn on the cob and I just really I'm so excited to share with you because I really think I nailed it oh my god look at that Mary Jane oh my um, god you can see on the screen that it is a cookie dough corn on the cob <laughs> that looks great <laughs> looks amazing and then I'm taking this a is, picture of you. this is what I made Mike and I really feel like um in tribute to the uh, wonderful show hosted by Nicole Byer. Nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> I, Mark is I very really upset. I really do think that I nailed it. Um, <laughs> it, it looks so tasty. It looks like a nightmare. so bad. I'm, I'm going to hand it to you because it is edible. If you, is it? I'll, if I like love to cookie take a dough bite, and I love candy corn. I know everyone's like, candy corn's gross. Shut it's, up. It's it truly, so good. It's the most nailed it of all nailed it's that, that ever was. It's, it's, I mean, it's supposed to look like a log of cookie dough surrounded by candy corn and neat little rows. And um, what I made looks like a hand grenade <laughs> <laughs> that's falling apart. I really tried. I was so excited to bring this in. I thought it was going to be great. And then um, I just failed miserably. So it is so good. Here is my uh, public humiliation of, is mm. it good? I'm yeah, it's really it. good. Yeah, right. It's sugar cookie dough. Sugar cookie dough with candy corn. Delicious. Yeah. I think it looks awesome. It um, does look like a grenade. Yeah. Or like a fucking psychedelic pine cone that exploded or something. <laughs> Wait, one more piece of cookie dough. What it does not look like is a actual Thank you. corn on the cob. Mm. Um, <laughs> that's really good, though. Well, that's our cream corner. Um, so what's the recipe? <laughs> Do you really want it? <laughs> yep. It's um, butter, sugar, vanilla extract, almond flour, 
and salt for the cookie dough. And then you roll that into logs and you refrigerate it for two hours. In my case, I did it overnight. I don't know why it didn't work. Mm. And then you go and get candy corn. And then you put the candy corn into the sugar cookie dough. And it should look like this. <laughs> or. But instead, it looks like this. <laughs> um what was so crazy was I decided Every, I was, with all these kids come over and it's like trick or treat and you show those and they're like, all right, here's a trick. <laughs> like, <laughs> never mind. I mean, I talk a lot about abortion on my sandwich page right now. And I feel like this is kind of an abortion <laughs> of a of an attempt at a candy um, thing. I uh, had an interesting time getting the candy corn because uh, it's strangely not that easy to find. I feel like it should be everywhere right now. So I ended up finally going to the CVS. And this bag, of, guess how much this bag of candy corn cost? Well, it's like a big bag. It's mm -hmm. like a three pound, five pound bag. Yeah, a two and a half pound bag. Two and a half pounds, $22. Wow, really? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, sandwiches cost 15. I have no idea how much anything costs candy anymore. Candy corn math. I thought it was so expensive. It was like thirteen fifty. That is expensive. It was so expensive. And then I had to go to the grocery store. I went to Sprouts because I'm trying to avoid Whole Foods nowadays because fuck those guys. Um, I went to Sprouts and they had the same amount of candy corn on sale. For guess how much? On sale? Mm -hmm. 12 Three ninety nine. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. CBS owes me 10 bucks. Fuck yeah, Because they do. Jesus Christ. How can, how can any anything have a price difference of that much? Like how can one item cost thirteen fifty in CVS and three ninety nine at Sprouts? Such a good question, especially because all of it is from 1988 because yeah. it does not spoil. And it's just corn syrup. It's just corn syrup. Food so what are we talking about? Why did I think that paying that amount at CVS was not going to fucking bite me in the ass? What do you mean, Mark? Insurance prices. Oh, pharmacy prices. Oh, big pharma shooting it up. Big pharma with the fucking cream corn domination. I don't know why I go to CVS. I don't know where I shop, why I shop anywhere. Don't shop anywhere. Quit reading the news. Yeah. Get up. Just, just smoke weed and look at trees. <laughs> <laughs> What's your costume? <laughs> it's it's just holding a blunt looking at a tree, it's I It's just guess. me being outside. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to breathe through all of it because shit is fucked up. Yo, for real, for real. Oh, my God. Well, thank you for making it. That's a lot of fun. You've made uh, you've made stuff the past two episodes. Thank you. I think maybe, I'm going to keep it up. Maybe keep it up. Yeah. yeah I, think, I, I like having something to try on air. And listen, if it's as fantastic a failure as this, it's a it's a good time to talk about it. Yeah. That thing's awesome and tasty. At the end of the day, it's very tasty. I mean, it's okay. You can't go wrong <laughs> with butter and sugar. <laughs> um, I feel like we're at it. Do we can we share a quick story? Mark, where are we at? Can we share a quick scary story? Okay, we were talking about this yesterday on our walk and talk and talking about like Halloween and spooky stuff and saying like, did any has anything legitimately scary ever happened to you? Yeah. And I have a story. Yeah. So do you want me to just tell it? Yeah. Well, because we're talking about like, we're not talking about like I saw a scary movie and it scared me or like I turned the corner and like was startled by a mime or something like that. Like we're talking about like real scary mm -hmm. stories that have happened to you. Yeah. Okay. So my story is when I was a little girl growing up in Newfoundland, my mom had moved out of my dad's room and she had moved her bed into my room. She shared a room with me. We lived in this like old creaky house. And um, I remember that time I was probably like, I don't know, seven or eight. And she had this experience one night where I was asleep in my bed and she was asleep in her bed and she woke up to feel this pressure on her chest. She felt like something was sitting on her and she couldn't breathe and she couldn't breathe and she couldn't breathe. And she was trying to move and she was trying to say something and she just couldn't. And finally the pressure abated and it went away and she was like, well, that was weird. And anyway, a few nights later, the same thing happened. She woke up and she felt this pressure on her chest, like something was sitting on her and she couldn't say anything or breathe or move. And then finally she managed to like against all of the, took all of her strength. She managed to sit up and she saw this creature at the foot of the bed, crouched at the very foot of the bed. She jumped out of bed. She ran down the hallway screaming for my father. And she said the whole way as she was running down the hallway, she could feel this thing reaching for her behind her, like this hand just going, like she could almost feel it kind of fluttering behind her. Mm. For some reason, I was told about this as a child. This made this huge impression on me. I was absolutely terrified. It was in my room and it happened in my room. And a few nights later, I was lying in bed and I was just sort of just falling off to sleep. And all of a sudden, I felt my blanket start to get pulled and pulled and pulled from the foot of the bed. And so I lay in bed just like a little girl holding onto my blanket for dear life with my eyes squeezed shut because I knew if I opened them, I was going to see something. And the whole thing was just like pulling, pulling, pulling me down to the edge of the bed. And I managed to like keep on the bed and then finally let go. And um, I never saw anything, but 
I but remember that feeling. I remember that feeling. It was real. Wow. And it wasn't the family dog. Right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What do you think it was truly? Not to like with no judgment, no nothing. What do you think it was? There's an old wives tale in Newfoundland. It's called the hag. And she is the one that comes and sits on your chest in the middle of the night. So you can't breathe. It's a nighttime vis- visitation. It's a terror of some kind. I think she's, you know, demonic, I guess. Yeah. I don't even know if she's demonic or what, but she's, it's like around Newfoundland is known like I, the hag came to see me last night. Wow. Mm-hmm. And the hag came to see you both. Mm-hmm. Holy shit. I that's scary. I don't know scary. what was going on in the house at that time, but I remember it like it, it felt super real. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It did happen. Yeah. Absolutely. I remember. So I mean, yeah. yeah. I remember um I remember when um you told me you were in to tell a scary tale on this mm. when we were on our walk and talk. And as you said, I'd like to tell a scary tale, the skin stood up on your arm mm-hmm. just purely from like your it's own so- mind's eye picturing it I made your it. skin stand on end yesterday. Mm-hmm. That's fucking terrifying. It was scary. Jesus Christ. Okay, what's your scary Well, good night, everyone. Fucking <laughs> mine. Mm-hmm. Uh, it happened three days ago. Mm-hmm. Um, I was at that house party that we were at with Leonard, mm-hmm. and I was wearing this Sonic onesie costume, mm-hmm. and um, the mushrooms had kicked in, and I was tripping, but not tripping too hard, and I thought I had to pee, but I wasn't sure, and so I went to the bathroom, but I've never worn a onesie before this, and so I went to the bathroom and wasn't sure what the heck to do. In case I did have to pee and the sensation was real, even though I was tripping, so I wasn't sure if the sensation was real or not, but I was like, better safe than sorry. So I start unbuttoning the onesie and I start pulling it down and then I go to pee and then I pee. So I did have to pee. And so that part was real. And then I had to get the onesie back on. And because I was on mushrooms and I've never worn a onesie, it felt like it took 15 minutes for all of this to occur. And then I was mortified because there were other people waiting for the restroom. And I was like, oh, they're all going to think that I pooped at a house party. And no, I'm not. And I almost walked out and said, it's the onesie. It's because of the onesie. (laughs) It's the onesie. And, uh, and instead I just like walked out confidently and just like, was like, I didn't, it was a number one. And so, um, and so, yeah, mine is a horror story about what it must be like to wear onesies as a woman, because everyone thinks you probably poop all the time. Yeah. I I feel like we get a pass as women because we just take longer to go to the bathroom. There's stuff that we have to just well, do with Well, as a dude, it's but... the scariest thing I've ever thought yeah. of. <laughs> the, all the people at the party are like, that guy with the snacks in his pants just shit in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> Don't eat the snacks. Don't eat the snacks. The poop snacks. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Oh, man. Wow. That's a nightmare, Mike. It that's was. A, that's a real nightmare. Fucking terrifying. Visitation from the hag and a onesie poop story. Yeah. There you go. Ooh. Spooky Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> From Weed and Grow. Uh, you want to do Buds of the Week and get out of here? Yeah, let's do Buds of and the Week. And shout out Scent Air one more time, Thank y'all. you so much to Scent Air for sponsoring us. It feels so cool to rock with uh, a wonderful company that's been so supportive of the podcast. Again, use the code GRUB for 25% off. You know what? I'm going to bring my unit to Vegas when we host the MJs. Because that's the move. Our hotel suite is going to be loud. That's the move. Ooh, we're going to have so much weed at the Palms Hotel. And I don't want housekeeping to be busting in. So maybe the Scent Air Cannabis Neutralizer will be uh, the perfect device to bring to our hotel suite. And um, That's yeah, a good call. plug it in, plug it in. You have one too. We can each bring one. Let's bring it. Mm-hmm. Also, if you um, if you want to support us, support the people who support us, like Scent Air. So go to scentair.com and uh, check everything out and use code GRUB. Yeah. Yeah. They're great. Um, Buds of the week? Yeah. Okay. You have a great butt of the week this week, yeah. I know. My butt of the week this week. Uh, Jimmy Devine. Um, shout out at the Jimmy Devine. We're becoming friends. He's a good guy. I'm wearing my official Judge Laminate that I got this past weekend at his Trans Bay Challenge, the main event. Uh, he is an OG weed smoker. He's a great writer. And also he started his own c- cannabis competitions. And uh, they started in the Bay. And now they've grown so much that he did a huge one here in Los Angeles this weekend. He's also done them at Spanibus. And uh, we were talking last night. He was at the Comedy Store. And he threw this banger of a party in Germany in this airplane hangar. And another one in an old abandoned railway station. Yo. Yo, he's a cool motherfucker. And he smokes hella blunts. And we got <laughs> lit last night. So shout out to Jimmy Devine. Thank you so much for letting me be a judge for your Trans Bay Challenge. And uh, can't wait to keep up with whatever you're doing next. I love love reading his work at LA Weekly. He's one of the sort of OG weed journalists. Like, you know, I put him in the same category as Danny Danko, like someone who really knows about 
the plant and strains and cultivators and all that sort of stuff. He's like writing about you know, the culture at large, but also like he has such deep knowledge. So, you know, I really always look to him when like a new strain comes out. I'm like, I don't know. What, where, where is this coming from? He always knows. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Who's your butt of the week? My butt of the week is Ashley Deering. She's an artist in Sacramento at Depressed Happily on Instagram. She's a fantastic follow. Her art is weird and cool, just like her. She's a super fun follow. And um, we met her when we were up there doing uh, our 420 show last year in Sacramento when she was doing live painting at a dispensary that we were at. And she's just like cool. And she hangs out on my sandwich video sometimes and says like supportive stuff. And I just really, really, really like her work. It's just like, yeah, depressed happily is her handle that kind of says everything. She's like, like making really beautiful sort of like bright pop art out of kind of sad scenes. Yeah. I have one of her paintings. That's mm -hmm. a good description of it. And uh, she's great. Cool. Shout out depressed happily. And shout out scent air. <laughs> <laughs> Use that code GRUB for 25% <laughs> off. And um, listen, I'm going to do better next time. This candy corn grenade is now melted into a pile of, um, I don't even know what. It's just goop. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I really fucked that up. You're going to put it put it in some kid's pillowcase and make them cry. We got to keep a tally. Banana bread pudding, win. Yes. This, L. L. Took an L on this Big one. Big L. Yeah. Sorry. I'm going to get back to those fentanyl lace Twix bars. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> or I'm fine. <laughs> oh, my God. Follow us at Weed and Grub on Instagram. We're Mike and Mary Jane on TikTok. Whenever we post there, we're at WG at Weed and Grub .com. If you want to email us pictures, show us your Halloween costumes. We'd love to post them and share them. Uh, what else? Uh, get tickets to the MJs. We're going to be hosting that November 30th. And truly, yeah, hit us in the DMs, hit us in the comments with everything we've talked about on here from Halloween costumes to favorite candies to stoner survival techniques. What are you up to? What do you want to know about? We love hearing from you. Bye, everyone. Bye.